Hello, my, my name is Dr. Dabaja. Uh, I'm one of the critical care fellows here at the University of Florida. Um, I'm also trained in emergency medicine. Today we're going to be doing uh, a little bit of lung profiling um, when we talk about ultrasonography. Uh, the point of this a little session is not to go over the blue protocol, uh, which kind of goes over all the different lung profiles and the different differential diagnosis, but just to kind of identify the basics of lung profiling. Um, so typically, to begin, um, when you do lung profiling, you're probably going to use your cardiac probe. You're also able to use your abdominal probe as well um, to, for this uh, examination. Uh, vascular probes typically are reserved to just evaluate the pleura um, if you were doing lung ultrasonography. So initially, when you want to uh, do the initial uh, exam, you could start off on either side, obviously. Uh, but you want to go to the anterior chest. And in the anterior chest, typically um, you want to go through uh, and, and see uh, a lung profile or a section of the lung, typically between ribs two and three or three and four, um, and typically it's at the mid um, clavicular line as well. So let's start off here. Let's find out what kind of lung profiles we are going to be seeing. So the initial image that you want to see is um, lung parenchyma. You're going to see a hyperechoic um, line here, followed by uh, two ribs that flank that are going to be hypoechoic, or they're going to be the ribs themselves. And so you initially um, are looking, let's say, for A-lines. So if you only see A-lines, which are right here, these typically represent a normal variant um, and reverberations of um, the pleura. And so on this patient, you're seeing A-lines only. You may also see on this profile something um, like B-lines. And typically B-lines will extend from the pleura itself all the way down, kind of um, extending all the way to the bottom of the screen, which this patient does not have. If you were to see B-lines, you typically have to see two or more in order to classify the lung as a B-profile. If you see none, and all you see is A-lines, or reverberation of the pleura itself, you will be calling this an A-profile. So you would also need to consider the second side in order to classify the exam as a profile, as an A-profile, or a B-profile, or an AB-profile. So if I go over to the next lung and I see a very similar picture with only A-lines, I'm going to call this patient uh, um, an A-profile. If on the opposite side I had um, B lines, and um, the side that we're looking at now only A lines, I would call that AB profile. And if both sides had B lines, they would be called a, a B profile. All of those diagnose, uh, all of uh, those profiles have a different differential diagnosis. And a patient that typically has an A profile, um, we could uh, not assume, but um, multiple things can be uh, thought of when we have uh, A profile. One being normal aerated lung. Uh, such as in this patient who is relatively healthy, and also uh, processes such as pulmonary embolisms, um, COPD, um, asthma as well, um, can give you an A profile. Um, obviously, if you see an A profile, that would prompt you to kind of do a further workup. Um, in this case, if let's say we were considering a PE, we would move on to a DVT uh, exam, etc. In an AB profile, um, the B lines um, that you would see could suggest that there's pulmonary edema or fluid fill alveoli, um, congestion, also pneumonias can appear as well. Um, and an A, a B profile, which is asymmetric. And then obviously in a B profile um, where you have fluid filled alveoli, pulmonary congestion, etc., and the bilateral lungs, you can um, consider things as um, ARDS. Um, heart failure or hydrostatic pulmonary congestion, things such, uh, of that nature.